Hey, it's Drew Light here. We're back. This time we're going to be taking a look at Cash Me If You Can from DPH Games. This one was given to me by a local game designer to check out. I actually had an earlier copy of it and uh, he replaced it with this newer version, which is what they have in print right now. I talked about it on the podcast and uh, this is a board game based on geocaching. I'm not really familiar with geocaching in general, but for those of you out there who are, it's a um, great gateway into gaming. Even if you're not um, sure what it is or that interested in real geocaching, the game itself is still pretty fun. And myself, I had no idea what geocaching even was until I actually took a look at the game. But it's uh, basically you're going out, you're exploring the woods using your GPS, trying to track down little metal boxes, which is actually what the box here looks like to find a um, hidden cache and it can be anything from a coin to various items and things. In this they're worth points. The more points you get the closer to the goal you get. It's kind of cool. Supports two to four players. They actually have six characters in the game and I don't see why you couldn't play six player but uh, it might get a little hectic at that. We definitely found the more players you have the more fun it is though. And um, we'll get right in and take a look. It did come in a couple different boxes. This is the newest one that's available. It's got a uh, handle on there. It's got a Velcro top, which I accidentally ripped mine because of the Velcro. you got to pull on this to get it, and I ripped the side already. But holds it on there nice. There was a uh, original model that had like a flip top. It was a really thin cardboard. I don't think they make that one anymore. And then there was a deluxe model that actually came in a metal ammo crate. Still a really cool looking box that's supposed to resemble the, uh, the ammo crate. And even with the rip side, the Velcro holds enough to still carry it around by the handle, which is cool. All our components are in here. We got them organized in Ziploc bags just to make it easier. But there's all of your tiles. These are going to go on the different locations on the board, and these actually have your caches in them and other hazards and things that you'll come across. There's your cards in here. We have um, an event deck, an equipment deck, which are color-coded, and then these cards on the top are the actual characters. And we have our GPS uh, pens. And units for the various players. I have a bag of geo coins. The various player tokens in their stands. They also do sell on the website actual figures for these. I don't know if they're still available, but they had them at one point where you could get plastic figures for these. We have our rules. I will say the one complaint I have about the rule book is that there are no, you can see there, it's all text. There's no pictures or examples. I do have an older version of the rules somewhere, which I don't have on me right now, but uh, it did have a couple diagrams in there. They, I think they help out a lot when making a rule book. So hopefully in the future in a, another printing, maybe they'll extend this another page or so and add in some, some diagrams and examples with pictures. And then we have our three board segments. And you have your main board here. Which this section is actually a store where you can go to buy supplies and things. There's a swap shop down here where you can trade things around. You have the cafe here which is where you start. And the hospital up here which is where you go when you get injured. And then the uh, geocaching event up here which is where you can trade with other players. And uh, the first time you go there you also get cards. And the advanced rules you have to end here as well. And then you have these trails that go off. There's one here, there's one there. There's one there. So on our other boards, you have these wooded areas that re represent the forest and the grids. You can see where the uh, cache tiles are going to go. And those trails connect down to here. And um, there's different, you get two different ones of those. 
as well. And again, they used to sell um, extra boards with different trails on them on the website. Not sure if they still do. I think they do. But you can add more trails and different varieties. For moving, if you're moving on the streets in the city or on the actual trails, you can move up to three spaces. Otherwise, when you're moving through the woods, you can only move one space at a time or the stores or the hospital, things like that. So once you have your board set up and all the tiles laid out, you're going to randomly draw one of these, which are the character cards. Now I do have one promo card in here that actually came with cats, so we'll put that aside because he's not a normal one in here. So for the standard game, you have the cartographer, the coin collector, the gadget, the puzzler, the storyteller, the borrower, the shopper, the snoop, and they all have different abilities down here. I'm not going to go through every one, but they all help you out um, with various things. For example here, the gadget can take night or water caches without uh, the proper equipment. And um, there's other ones that let you do various things. The shopper's a cool one, lets you look at... Uh, and take whatever card you want, which is cool. The Snoop lets you look at the tiles on here before you uh, flip them over to see where you want to move. But you're going to take uh, whatever you're using, whatever you get, you're going to put it in front of you. It's going to be just off camera here, isn't it? So we can adjust that a little. And then next to it, you're going to have your GPS. If you ever lose your pen or your battery dies, you flip this over. Without the uh, GPS, you can't pick up any of the caches on the board. You have to go back to either the swag store to get a new one, or you can replace it in the uh, actual store. Then you got your character token, which is going to start on the cafe. And you're also, each player is going to get three equipment cards to start. And the equipment cards in this are kind of cool because each one has two items. And to represent which items you're going to have, you put them in front of you with the item you want to use facing towards the board. Now once they're placed like that, you have to keep them at whatever they are and you lose whatever the other one is. Unless you go back to the swap shop down here, the swag store, which lets you flip those over. But these are going to give you various things like here's an extra battery pack for your GPS if it runs out snack the uh, discard after using but they let you take an extra turn um, things like the tweezers and the solve card here allow you to open certain lock boxes you're going to come across on the board which you can't pick up unless you have the right tools for and you have things like the jacket here which are going to protect you from various hazards that pop up on the map here as we flip over these tiles so just for the heck of it, we're going to put these down like so, and we'll take the solve. The gameplay itself is pretty simple. As I said before, when you're on the roads and the trails, you can move up to three at a time. Once you get out here in the woods, then you get to move onto the woods. You can only move one space throughout the woods. And when you do so, you're going to flip over the tile that you're stepping on. In this case, our very first one causes us to lose a turn because there's no GPS signal. Um, there's other various ones that are going to pop up. This is actually a cache that you get. You take this and you're going to put it in your inventory and it's going to score you one point. And you put that down here, which is just off camera I see. And then you're going to replace that tile with something else, randomly drawn. And that's how play continues. There's various items that are going to come up. Here's a multi-cache. This one uh, re requires that you have stage 2 in your inventory. You need all three of the stages in order to score the points. And doing so gets you five points. If you uh, don't, in that case, if you don't have the other ones, you would leave that there and anybody could pick that up later on. Some of the tiles are just terrain. In which case these stay in play. There's an extra trail which counts as open trail once that's revealed. 
Then there's things like the pond here, which can't be crossed, so you have to return to your previous space next turn. And these will stay in play. There's also animals and things that will send you to the hospital. There's also a cave and a bear that can come up. The cave actually makes a whole area. And um, if you go into that area and you don't have snacks to satiate the bear, it will um, end up sending you to the hospital. And then you have to spend turns to get out of the hospital. And there's various cards and things that let you deal with things like that. There's an insurance form that lets you get out of the hospital quicker and things like that. Med kits that will prevent you from being sent to the hospital first time and so on. And we also have these event cards which come up. You can get these by going through the store. The first time you go to the geocaching mega event square up here, just off the top of the screen there. And um, they have various effects. Some are good, some are bad. Some you can keep until you need to play them. Some play immediately like this. In this case, you get to draw a free equipment card, which is kind of cool. And these will go in the discard pile. Same with equipment goes in the discard pile. And there's various ways that actually let you pick cards out of the discard pile as well. Overall, though, the game plays pretty quickly. It's pretty fun. It's easy enough to figure out. We did have a couple questions. There's some, some uh, things about what tiles to leave in play, what tiles to replace, things like that. It's all pretty self-explanatory. As I said, a couple of picture examples in the rule book would go a long way towards uh, um, fixing any of the issues that we had. One of the major things that I'd like to see is where they talk about, like, here's the cave. There's actually a tile that has the cave on it. It'd be cool to see the image of that right next to it. They, I think it does have the text on there as well, so it's not like it's that confusing. But it was really fun. Even as a, a non-geocacher, I, I can imagine if you're into that, you're going to get so much more out of it. But it's still a fun, light, playable game, even for people who aren't into that um, lifestyle. And uh, the other thing I kind of skipped over was the coins. For some of the caches, you're going to get a coin. So here's a mystery cache. In order to open this, you need a solve card, which we, do, we did pick up there at the beginning we could use. In that case, you could pick this up, you would get the three points for it, and you get this little coin icon right here. So you're going to get one of these coins. And all these coins are worth one point on their own. And on top of that, on the back, they have a special goal. If you ever meet the requirements of the special goal, you can flip these over, and then you're going to score the points listed on them instead of just the one. So that's also a nice, cool way to get extra points. Then they have a couple different options for you as well. The normal game plays to 15 points. If you want to play a slightly faster game, you could play to 12 points. They also have advanced optional rules that uh, let you play to 18 points and be the first person to get back to the geocaching event square. There's also an instructional video on how to actually play. And I'll put the link to the website there um, at the bottom of the screen as well as down in the show notes for you it's a lot easier if you see somebody play something than try to explain it i just kind of went over things basically here but overall though the game's pretty fun from what i saw the more people you have the more fun it is we did play a couple games with only two and it wasn't as fun but it still was interesting more players you really have to pay attention to what equipment and things people have the events that pop up there's events that let you steal cards from other players and things like that which really add a bit more to the game especially the more players you have and uh it, it adds some uh, interesting variety to it too because everybody plays a little bit different some people are going to stay out here and just search for basic caches other people are going to go to the store and stock up on supplies so they can get some of those that are worth more points my copy did have a small printing um mistake from what i've heard it's a it's a very rare thing because uh the designer said he hasn't heard anybody else had the same issue but if you can tell some of my tiles are a little bit darker than others it's not a major game breaking issue but it uh if you play with play it enough or with people you can start to learn the darker colored ones are what they are gives you a little bit of an advantage but not too bad as i said it's it's a one-off thing so they haven't had any complaints about anything else, so could just be a printing thing. I have plenty of other games that have had similar issues. 
Overall, though, it's a really fun little light game. It's very interesting to play a game like this without dice. That was something that was kind of odd for me is that there's there's no dice rolling involved. Your movement's preset. You know, landing on the tem or squares, you flip over the tile and resolve what it is. Your equipment cards are either continual once you have them or discards. So it's a very strange in that respect. But uh, overall, though, it's fun. It's fast. And uh, we played several games of it the first time I played. Everybody wanted to play more, so. That about wraps it up for Cash Me If You Can. Thanks for watching, and we'll uh, see you in the next video.